Welcome to Online Off Script, where we discuss trending topics and all things new on the internet. I'm Sam Olmsted, Online Optimism's New Orleans Managing Director. And I'm Mira McNitt, the Social Media Director. This week, we are talking about why the right CRM tool can boost sales. Our guest today is Jason Gless, Senior Growth Development Officer at Diaz & Cooper, an inbound agency based in Miami, Florida. Jason has been at Diaz & Cooper since October 2021 and has served as Senior Growth Director, Senior Project Manager, and now the Senior Growth Development Officer. Diaz & Cooper was founded in 2001, and their team of 12 works to develop data-driven strategies, build customer bases, drive website traffic, and get users to convert. Some notable clients include Lennar, Silver Airways, Region 7 Seas Cruises, and more. Well, thanks for joining us, Jason. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you both? We're doing good. I've introduced yourself a little bit um, and where you work and kind of what experience you, you bring to the table today. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Sam and uh, Mira, for both having me here. I really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Jason. I work for Diaz Cooper. Uh, we're an agency located really all over the Western seaboard. Uh, we, we all work remotely. I've been in sales for 20 plus years. Uh, and, and really, as I've learned, um, it, it's not necessarily selling like we used to do where you're selling door to door as much as it is finding the right fit uh, really for your agency or for your company to to know what to do and, and how we can help. Uh, so in my, my current role with Diaz Cooper uh, is a, a senior growth officer, which is it basically really fancy words for saying uh, my role is to find the right people that we can help help them, and then be that advocate throughout the entire uh, experience. Cool. Very like cool. It. Yeah. So where do CRMs fall into this for you? Yeah, CRMs are essential. And there's one that I'm going to favor heavily uh, that I've used in, in many different uh, instances in my, in my tenure, if, if, I, if I may. Uh, and, and that's HubSpot. And really, it's it's providing the quantifiable analytics that we have to have. And that is at the end of the day, no matter where you're at, does this spend make sense? And we need a way to prove that. And having a robust CRM to provide that it makes a night and day difference. Have you had experiences where a like account, like a client that y'all have comes to you and they're like, I don't think that the marketing's working and you've been able to pull up HubSpot and be like, nope, we can show you right here that it is. Yeah, that's a great question, actually. Uh, one thing that HubSpot allows us to do is manage by campaign. And so we create different campaigns that we then monitor and we will tag and draw in additional data from Google Analytics, uh, from many other sources that all compile into one. And it really, if we had enough time, I'd love to have a little show and share as my seven-year-old puts, it's not show and tell, it's show, and sh show and share. Uh, but it, it really puts the entire campaign at, at, right in front of you. And it says, based on this, this happened, based on this, this workflow happened. And it even can you know attribute sales to that. So this investment made us this much. Great question. Yeah. So when you start a campaign, um, do you work with clients who don't have a CRM and then you set that up for them? So a lot of the times, uh, it, and we're 100% HubSpot agency, uh, not to say if you're not currently on HubSpot, we're not going to work with you. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, I have several great examples of us, you know, in the discovery phases, which we get very in detailed on you know, what's what's your business? What's your plan? What's your brand? How do you want to grow? And, and how do you expect us to help? Uh, once we go through that, we, we come back with a recommendation. And if you're not on HubSpot, then it's time to get on HubSpot or we're not going to be the right fit. We have a team set up that will support us everything HubSpot versus a team that does all sorts of things across the board. So do you think that HubSpot has a place regardless of your industry? Like can all marketers use HubSpot or is it really specific to just like e-com or like lead driving? Yeah, uh, I have used it in several different industries from, um, geez, an international electrical company I've implemented in as, as a consultant. I've implemented in a L&D environment. 
I have implemented in an agency environment. And, you know, I, I think the support that we get is phenomenal. Cool. I mean, yeah, we use HubSpot at Online Optimism and it's a great way to track leads. It's a great way to just track companies and, and kind of have everything all in one place. Are there any other CRMs that you would recommend? Um, and if so, why would they be better or different than HubSpot? There are others, and I, I, don't, I will not speak negatively against any other. Uh, it's just HubSpot for me, for us, has been uh, really the way of the future. And the fact that we can pull in so many different data points and use it agnostically through the entire environment of any agency, any company, I think that's what sets it apart. And just being associated with that part of it, I'm happy with it. There, you know, There's tons of different PM tools. There's... It, we use a very different PM tool. You can use HubSpot for PMing, uh, but it, it just seems to work best for us. Hopefully that answers your question without skirting the obvious. Yeah. What PM tool do you use? We use ClickUp and I am 100% a ClickUp fanatic. <laughs> why, why, why is that? Uh, I think ClickUp is, is really, uh, they're, they're, the fact that they're up, their uptime is almost 99.999%. So it's always available. It's web-based. We can assign things. We can do a ton of different things. They're always growing into something new. Um, they're always expanding. Uh, I spoke with them recently and when, when we went to Boston at HubSpot Inbound 2022. And the amount of ideas that is coming down the pike is, is just invigorating. And the, we can actually invite our clients. We can invite our third-party vendors, our partners, all within this PM system and give them the views that they need to be efficient. And for DS Cooper, that's extremely important because we are 100% a row. So we're, we're results only work environment, uh, which to us, we don't care if you're in the Caribbean or in Ant Antarctica, just get the work done and do it the right way. So having that robust PM software, that system in place, and then having those really, you know, the wiki in place and how to do things is, is extremely powerful. Okay. A row. Haven't heard that term used before. Love the concept. Do y'all have set working hours or online hours or do people just, as long as the work is done, it doesn't matter when they're on. We have zero hours. We do not have a brick and mortar. Uh, go row.com is, uh, we were the first digital agency to be row certified. We absolutely love them. We have a great relationship with them. Sorry for the plug, had to. Uh, but again, there is no, there, there may be meetings, right? You got to talk to clients, you got to talk internally. But at any given time, I could have a senior marketing manager call me up and say, hey, I got a question on this or what's happening here. And we just chat like we all live in the same home. I mean, it's amazing the way that our team operates. Does that cause any issues with maybe workplace boundaries or time boundaries for people that may have families or, or have other things going on in their lives? Or how does that kind of play into it? Yeah. I, in, in that work-life balance is extremely important. And that's really what results only work environment does give you is so that I can go and coach my seven-year-old uh, at his soccer game, at his soccer practice, and, and, and still come back and finish what I need to do the night before. And as, as long as you have that robust operating system, that CMS that is setting everything up for success. Everything's in there. We all know the due date. It's not a surprise that, you know, we need the brief completed this date. We need this sent out to this, 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 and this. There's no surprises there. And, and it's the same thing that we do when we work with our clients or we usually refer to them as partners. We're working on an annual plan. When we have that, we're down to a 90 day plan and all this is spelled out. And, and it makes a world of difference. So there are no necessarily surprises. Things do come up where you're doing a website launch and, hey, you know what? We need the whole team available and on standby, but that's, you know, that's part of the business. Exactly. One thing that, oh no, go ahead, Sam. I was just gonna ask whether or not tying in your partners into your project management and your, your projects, seeing allowing them to see things in real time as they get completed or, as they're assigned, um, if that jumbles up your workflow at all. Um, I know that sometimes partners can be unresponsive or um, maybe less on top of the game uh, than agencies are. 
um, not to say not ours, of course. Um, so just curious about how that ties into your workflow process. So that is a very, uh, a very good question, a very loaded question. Um, I can, I can tell you from our side, usually it's not us that we're waiting on clients that we work with our partners, they have a plethora of items happening. So the better that we can enable them with information, whether it be certain dashboards and HubSpot sequences, workflows, et cetera, that we're kind of behind the scenes pulling the strings, or even for us, we have a dedicated dashboard for each one of our partners that they can, it's a read only, they can log in at any time. Part of the onboarding that we do together is bookmark this specific page. Anytime you're not sure what's happening, you can pull up every single meeting agenda, you can pull up your customer value journey, you can pull up absolutely every piece of data that we have, which also then links back out uh, to individual blogs that are waiting uh, pending approval or anything like that. We know our partners are busy. They have a lot of other things going on. So the best that we can enable them for success, that's really how we've used that. How much of this is stuff that Diaz and Cooper has been doing the whole time? And how much of this is like newly implemented, especially since 2020? Because I know a lot of businesses made changes in that time. And I'm assuming y'all did too. Yeah. It, so Diaz Cooper being around for 20 plus years, there was there was a brick and mortar at once upon a time. There was a time that big media uh, buys were happening and radio and, and this and that and even billboard. And really in the past year, we focused on EOS, which is a principle that we're, we're following strictly. It's uh, really for us to narrow down what are we most efficient with and what can we really help with? Let's not be an agency that does everything kind of. Let's be an agency that does a few things wonderfully. And, and so that's where we really narrowed this down and focus. We've always done it in, in some manner or another. Uh, but really finding our expertise and how we can be most efficient, that's where we want to be. Perfect. Um, I'm going to hop into some of the other questions we've got here. Can you tell us a little bit more about Diaz and Cooper's growth partnership program and how it works to design a business's growth strategy? That is a phenomenal question, Sam. Thank you. Um, Mira, not to say you haven't had great questions either. I'm just, in general, um, I appreciate that question. So we pride ourselves on being different. And this is going to be extremely cliche. This is one of the things we identified in our leadership meetings that we do all the time. Um, but we claim that our people and our processes is what sets us apart from everyone else. Big deal. Everyone says that. No, but seriously, before you can even get an interview, we, we take an immense consideration about what happens and how you join the team. We've all heard the analogy that we need the right people in the right seats on, the, on, on our bus. Diaz Cooper has a mega yacht. We don't have a bus, so we have a mega yacht as of now, philosophically speaking, but hopefully one day we have a literal mega yacht. You guys come down, we'll have the next podcast down there. Uh, and, and we look first, and, and again, um, credit needs to be due to Patrick, uh, Leon, Patrick Linsoni. Well, I'm, I'm murdering his name now. I apologize. Anyway, the ideal team player, right? So we first... Um, identify, are, are these people hungry? Are they humble? And are they smart? And there's a lot that goes into that. And there's a lot of grading to understand, is this the right person for this, for this role, for, for this team? And then are they going to be operating in their working genius? And it really identifies, uh, you know, when we bring them on board, will they fit in that pod structure? Will they fit in where they're going? and how they can benefit ultimately our partners, right? Our clients at the end of the day. And then finally, can they function in a role? Are they able to wake up in the morning? You can wear pajamas, that's fine. This is what I wore today. You don't have to put on a suit. And can they function in that? Can they be accountable? Do they have the responsibility? You know, and that is 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 what really sets DS Cooper apart from a lot of other companies, not just agencies that I've been a part of. Um, but then knowing once we have the right people on the yacht, now we can go sail, sail the seas, right? We can do anything. We have the right team. And, and for us, a minimum engagement looks, looks like 14 months at a minimum. And we've had people actually shy away, and that's fine. They're not the right partners for us. When we said onboarding takes approximately two months, 
So that's too long. We don't have that time. Well, that's all we have. That's one thing we don't, uh, one thing we can't replicate is time. So we have to make it, make it worthwhile. And, you know, these first month or two, first two months rather, that we're, we're, we're setting the standards, we're defining the buyer persona or personas, we're defining the customer value journey. These are, you know, it's really the foundation to success that we want to build upon. Once we have that, we can go in and make an annual marketing plan uh, that has to have the SMART goals, right? Which everyone sure knows as specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time bound, I believe. You know, making sure at the end of the day, at any given time, one of our partners says, hey, Jason, uh, what are you guys doing for us? Well, let's look at these three to five SMART goals. And these are the benchmarks we're, we're going after. Uh, are we moving the needle? If not, well, I guess we're doing something wrong. But usually it's, yes, we're moving the needle. Now, that's at a very strategic level. Then we get more tactical, right? And that's where we break down 90-day sprints. And and we've got some really neat graphics on a growth-guided expedition, and we're climbing up the mountain with you, and we're training you. Uh, but again, that's where we go from the strategic to tactical. And we're engaging on many different levels on how we can help with that. And and again, it goes back to the people that make the difference. We're, we have that dedicated pod structure where we have a senior marketing strategist or marketing manager kind of leading the entire pod, supported by a project manager, an inbound marketing coordinator, uh, an entire HubSpot tech team, HubSpot developer, UX, UI designer, copywriters, et cetera. Uh, so again, that's what really sets us apart. And then of course, being in that sales role, I think it's only important I speak about myself more because that's what we do in sales, is, is I also fall into that client success manager role. And my our, our senior marketing manager, ever since we've worked together, said, you cannot give out your personal cell phone. It's not allowed. For me, I'm just the opposite. You know, I will talk to a client at 8 p.m. on a Tuesday night because they're having a bad day. They're not sure what's happening. Just don't call me to execute things. I'm not a copywriter. I'm not a developer. I have ideas. They get forward down there. But you know what? If something's not working, call me. Let me know. And, and that's kind of the, the relationship we have with everyone we work with. So, uh, again, very long story, but hopefully that uh, summed it up well enough for you. Okay, so I have a question. So you're building your yacht. You're you're casting the people that are coming on the yacht with you. How long does the process look like to figure out if someone fits with y'all's everything that you have to make someone fit? So we've, we've narrowed it down and we have two quizzes that every um, possible shipmate would have. I don't know. Uh, essentially an employee, right? Um, wh what they fit, where they, where they fit, how they fit, right? So what is someone's working genius? Are they humble, hungry, and fit based on questions that are very well designed? Um, and then from there, we, we talk to them. And it's a matter of just having an open discussion. And it, it's not necessarily that we're we're having grilling questions, but we, you know, we want to talk to figure out who they are, what they are as a person. And and that really are those really are the main things that really qualify the right people to be part of the team. You know, we'd rather go through three hundred interviews and get three qualified people than just hire three people. That's a great point. I would love to kind of uh be a fly on the wall during your hiring processes, because I think, you know, we always talk about culture ad and what people bring to the table. Um, but it's also, it is important that people are comfortable working in the environment that you lay out. I mean, this whole row thing, the whole idea of completely remote and um, it takes a lot of accountability, I would assume, um, and a lot of structure and personal um, structure as well as professional structure. So I think it's really interesting that you all do that. And it's, obviously been successful for you. Um, I'm going to ask another question about, about CRM. So um, how great of an impact does utilizing the right CRM provide a business? And, and just kind of talk us through why it's so important. Um, you had mentioned a little bit earlier, but um, if you could give some sort of concrete examples of what really pushes the needle for these companies that come to you. Sure. It, it, first off, it's a massive impact. It's night and day. We're not operating. You know, it's 2020 something. It's not 1998 where we have you know paper documents, Excel spreadsheets that we're tracking this. And so I, I would love to paint a picture of a, a of a real life example um, without sharing too much information. But uh, 
when we when we started engaging with this partner, um, originally they had a very what I would consider a dated web platform. A dated web platform is someone that uh, it, it's a platform that you have to code. You have to go in there and you have to know HTML or CSS, and you have to be able to do that yourself or have a department that you pay for to do that. Uh, additionally, how do you measure analytics? Well, did we get a sale or did we not? Th there's not enough analytics to know if anything's working in any quantifiable way, right? And then when you're using an Excel document to track your sales or to track your contacts or, hey, I contacted this person on this date, put an X in, the, in cell E12 or whatever, you know, that's very antiquated. And when you send a proposal to someone via a Word document versus a polished PDF or something that you can track. You know, those those are things that are not reflective of a 2020 something company. Uh, and, and keep in mind without going into detail, this is a very luxury brand that we're working with. Uh, this is the best of the best. These, these are people that attract uh, really the only uh, most discerning customers, right? So the big change is what, what did, DS Cooper do? What did DCA do? That's how we refer to ourselves, DCA, DS Cooper Agency. Is first we, we merged the entire website to HubSpot. So we went from a platform that was heavy code based and we brought it into HubSpot within a matter of weeks. This enabled the client and it, it, for us, we want to teach the client, the partner on how to do this themselves, not to handcuff them into having you have to know code to update your website. You have to reach out to us or else. No, 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 no. We don't want to be bogged down with those basic things. We're, we're the bigger strategy, not change the deal on the website. So we train them, we teach them, and, and we give them the GUI to do that, right? The graphical user interface. Uh, and then even further, uh, we connected an online chat bot that connects directly to customer service. And they actually had a sale within the same week, which was pretty massive. So in the first week, they were starting to reap the rewards. Um, and then on the back end, with a, with what a CRM can really do, specifically HubSpot that we love to use, is we start creating and implement different workflows, right? So lead nurturing and generation and uh, how are people visiting the website? What forms are they filling out? And let's get into lead scoring and let's, let's make sure we're attending uh, attentive to these individuals more than the others and having their sales team create sequences and when to call, when to email, when to follow up. And it's all measured in there with a, a literally a nearly unlimited amount of dashboards that now the C-level goes, this is great. I can track where this dollar goes. I now know where my ad attribution comes from. Uh, and then what was really powerful, well, before we get to that, there was, we also did a customized drag and drop proposal. Uh, so now the, you know, the customer service can go in and just grab stuff, put it in there. And now they have this beautiful document that they can send for a proposal. We built an interweb for their for their customers. But the biggest thing is, is when the leadership team could see within HubSpot, and it was a literal uh, aha kind of moment. Wow, this person went to our website three times on these days. This person did this on our chat bot. This person interacted for so long with this page. Sales was able to reach out to that person and actually make a sale because of that. So it, it's a huge, huge impact. You know, you're getting the ease of use, you're getting those quantifiable analytics, you're getting different sales features, you have the web development. And again, in case you can't tell, I could probably talk for a long time, but it is extremely important to me. I think it's sort of like, um, you know, it's sort of like working on a flip phone and then realizing what a smartphone is. And, and seeing all the capabilities, all the features, all the functionality, and just bringing your business into the, the modern kind of CRM age of, of what you can do. So um, that's really cool. We do a lot of that as Same well. As, yeah, it's like, yeah it's, it's like going from printing out MapQuest directions yeah. or highlighting a map route to yeah. having a smartphone that, that guides you through the entire thing. It guides you through and it tells you when there's traffic tells you when there are cops on the on the road it tells you all this different stuff that you thought you had to just guess the whole time <laughs> yeah honestly what a good analogy because literally the other day i was like how much better would life be if everyone used ways to give everyone <laughs> the information and i i agree how much better would life be if everyone was using a good crm i agree 
I feel like even as a consumer, like it'd be great if companies that I was like into could see what I was doing and then be like, hey, we could tell that you had questions about this. Like, let us answer them. And I'd be like, oh, great. Yeah, that's exactly what I needed. Um, so, Mira, can I jump in on that? Because that's a phenomenal point. Yeah. Uh, is, am I allowed to go off script? Is that okay? Welcome to online off script. That's <laughs> what we do here. <laughs> I love it. So, so one thing that we love to do is when you have an opt-in audience, right? And, and this is all done in HubSpot is, is you can send them a form. You can send them information that says, what most interests you? Is it A? Is it B? Is it C? And then you can take that within HubSpot and you can segregate those individuals into A, B, C pods. So we know this group wants information on A, this group wants information on B, this group wants information on C. Why is that important? Well, what if your company is selling, uh, I don't know, pens and pencils to sweatshirts and sweatpants? Some people want pens and pencils. Some people want sweatshirts and sweatpants. Uh, I work from home, so I'm more partial to sweatshirt and sweatpants side of things. And giving those people the right information is huge. Not to mention the smart content capability that if I know you're a Mac user versus a PC user, I can deliver different content. So uh, I don't mean to derail you there, but it's just to me that is what's fascinating. And getting the right content to the right people makes a night and day difference. Oh, yeah. And when, you know, when iOS was making all of its changes that changed how we could track people and people were like, oh, yeah, I'm so excited. I was like, no, I'm going to start getting ads that don't matter to me. Because before they could see what I wanted to know. And I was like, oh, here are the products that I need. And like, it's not out the window, but it's definitely harder for that to be functioning. Very much so. So we have time for one more question. And I, I want to wrap it up. So what I've gathered today is that DCA is very forward thinking and being a row company. And part of the ways you're able to do that is by utilizing tools like ClickUp and HubSpot to remain organized, structured, and highly communicative, both inside and outside of the team. Is there anything else that you would want people to take away about DCA or how they can also be a row company? I, I can say in, in general, a lot of people are scared of the idea. A lot of people are scared to allow people to be adults. Uh, you know, and, and people in general, they want to do well. If not, they're not, they're not going to continue in that realm of whatever they're doing, whether it be business or, you know, personal. And, and I think the biggest thing is what we pride ourselves in is we respect who we work with. Um, we have discontinued relationships based on our partners or clients wanted us to be order takers. And we are not order takers. We are at a strategic level there to help move that needle forward wherever that gauge may be. And that's really the most important thing at the end of the day, right? That's what any good marketing agency would want to do. <clears throat> so it, it's really just being cognitive of, of yourself, your workspace, and, and just waking up and doing the right thing. Uh, you know, and as, as part of the leadership team, that's what we empower into every person that's part of the DS Cooper team uh, and, and including our partners. All right, Sam, you want to wrap us up? Yeah, sure. Um, before we go, Jason, I just wanted to ask if um, you could let us know how we can find uh, DCA, how we can find you, um, if there are any social media channels to call out or um, or upcoming projects or things that you want to discuss. Yeah. Uh, so dscooper.com, you can always look us up. Uh, you can always find me on LinkedIn. You can find us on LinkedIn, on social markets. Uh, I plan on getting out to as many as possible events in the next couple of years. It's great to be able to see people, to shake hands again. Uh, so definitely I'll be out there um, and, and happy to be a resource and point people in the right directions. If you have questions on any of, you know, we, we talked about ClickUp, we talked about HubSpot. If you have questions on that, I'm happy to share how we use it. Um, I do that with a lot of other folks. So we're happy to be a resource. Well, perfect. Um, thank you so much, Jason. It's been really informative. Uh, you seem like you really know your stuff and uh, DCA seems like a really innovative company. So really appreciate your time and, uh, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you both for the opportunity. Perfect. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe and rate the podcast. And if there's anything you'd like to hear us discuss, reach out on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. 
And as always, stay optimistic.